Every moment was perfectly written and perfectly summarized. Whether it's storytelling, packaging, or naming, it was just all really, it all came together. It's pure copywriting. By the message and how they delivered it and, and the humor they brought to it. Uh, it really popped for me in the storytelling category. Because it's so simple and so smart. You couldn't stop watching. Welcome. Uh, to the Jury Insights panel on writing, writing for advertising and writing for design. Uh, I'm going to host the next 30, 35 minutes. My, my name's Tim Lindsay. I'm, I'm chairman of DNAD, and I, I've been with DNAD for 12, 12 years now. Thank you all very much for agreeing to do this. Well, thank you for judging, first of all. I, I know it can be a long and painful process, um, especially done remotely. And... Um, could I just ask you to introduce yourself, say who you are, kind of what company you're from and which jury you were on? Um, and I'm going to go with my list. So it starts with Nancy. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nancy creamy Lamana, and I am the Chief Creative Officer of FCB Canada. And I had the privilege of being the jury president for writing craft for advertising. Hello, everybody. My name is Gaëtan Dupelot, and I'm the Chief Creative Officer of Marcel uh, in Paris. And I was uh, in the same jury uh, than Nancy, and it was an amazing experience. And we have seen amazing work. Hi, I'm Miho Aishima. I am uh, the uh, design director from Super Union. And I was on Writing for Design, and we saw some great work and had a great time judging this year. So yeah, really looking forward to this discussion. Hey, guys. I'm Keenan. I am a South African creative. I'm a senior copywriter at a fintech company called Trustly in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I was on the writing for design jury with Miho. Um, echo what she said, a lot of strong candidates this year, and I'm excited to, to talk about one of my favorite pieces of work. That's great. And that is exactly what we are going to do. Um, you, you've each selected a, a piece that I assume is kind of dear to your heart that you were particularly impressed with. That has been awarded. Um, uh, we have yet to find out what, at what level uh, the award ceremony is coming up. Um, and I'm going to go in the same order. Just ask each of you to say what you thought was special, what made it stand out for you, what, what earned it its accolade in, in, your, in your particular category. So, so Nancy, would you, would you like to start with, with the opening? Sure. Thank you. It's milk from a cow, the way it's always been. <sighs> I, it's perfectly normal to have these feelings. You only an oat drink carton after all. It can be hard turning your back on something we've been doing for thousands of years. So I'm not a weirdo then? I'm not gonna go blind or grow hairy palms or anything like that. <gasps> so I'm just like everyone else. Sure you are. Give me a hug. Now get in the washing machine. Yes, um, I chose the Oatly, Oatly piece. It's called The Norm and Al Show. It's a piece of branded content. It's about five minutes long. Uh, I chose it for many reasons. At the top of those reasons are, uh, it's meant to deliver a message about how normal a plant, you know, eating plant-based diet is, which, you know, when you think about that, you know, I think most times you'd roll your eyes at that kind of messaging. You'd probably tune it out or turn it off completely. But in this instance, they turned it into this incredible show where I, I was, you know, just mesmerized by the message and how they delivered it and, and the humor they brought to it. So they turned something that could be really not great into something that was a piece of entertainment. Um, and I think it could have gone so wrong and it, and it didn't. Um, and I think it was also very true to their brand and who they are. If you're familiar with the Oatly brand, they are a brand based on writing, um, very quirky writing. And this piece was no different. So it truly lived into who they were as a brand, but also created a piece of entertainment um, that was, you know, you couldn't stop watching. Brilliant. And, it, um, and, and just expand a little bit, Nancy, on, on the writing itself, on, on, on what you, you loved about this. You... Well, again, it, it's, it could have been a very dry message, you know, you know, plant-based diet is normal, therefore the Norm and Al show, you know, um, and the writing was incredibly humorous. 
Um, it talked about the RTBs of a plant-based diet in a way that you barely noticed because it was part of the entertainment itself. They made fun of themselves. They made fun of milk. Uh, you know, they used a lot of farting, which was, you know, in some instances we thought, okay, maybe that's superfluous, but just, it just, it really fit with the humor. So you forgave it. Um, and it was just every moment was perfectly written and perfectly summarized. Um, and it took you to the next moment. Um, and even the pauses and the beats were perfect in its awkwardness to build that humor. I think writing isn't just about the words you write on a page, especially when it comes to comedy. Comedy, I think, is one of the hardest forms of writing to get right because comedy is about the words on a page, but also the beats and the moments you take to get those jokes to land. And I think they did that perfectly. That's great. I, 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 when I say what I'm about to say, I don't mean this in any way as a piece of criticism, although sometimes comparisons can be odious, but it reminded me of a piece that was awarded last year, actually, for, for Childline here in the UK, which also used animation. But actually, it was about everyone feels they're not normal, but actually, because everyone feels like that, it's normal. So right. anyway, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a more serious subject. So that's great. Thank you very much. Um, Gaetan, would you like to talk about the piece you've chosen? My pleasure. I've chosen uh, radio. Uh, I, I want to talk about radio because we were judging uh, copywriting and radio is, is really uh, interesting uh, on that point because you're not, there's no image to interfere. Or it's pure copywriting and of course acting, but it's let's say pure and I really like it because it's very educational when you start as a, as a copywriter or in the past time, in the old time, you were crafting and writing lots of radios. And at one point radio came, I don't know, a bit down and a bit forgotten uh, where I was really, really happy uh, hearing some really great piece of radio advertising. So the first one that hit my mind was this uh, BK uh, Burger King campaign. Um, even more confusing time. I, I think it's really brilliant. Elena wants to delete a message she sent to her ex, but that sends a message that she deleted the message, which is worse than the original message. She's confused. It's even more confusing times. The best time to try Burger King's plant-based chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets without chicken that taste like chicken. It's the most uh, insightful uh, campaign uh, I've heard for a long time. Uh, I really like from a conceptual, let's say, point of view, uh, I think it's very true, very on point. It's really when time met an idea and it's really a good match uh, and it's totally uh, written led uh, and there are there is lots of generosity uh, what i love there is that it's very generous a, a lot of amazing punchline catchphrase they could have done i don't know just three or four but no they they gave us uh, plenty and I really like it it reminds me the quality of copywriting like I don't know if you remember the most interesting man in the world yeah. uh, that was a Dosekis campaign it reminds me those kind of campaign really really well written with lots of idea lots of richness uh, in it so and of course the connection with the product uh, and the time we are living in uh, I thought that was really brilliant and the actor uh, was uh, very good too. Uh, and the second piece uh, that I really loved too, but for another reason, uh, was um, radio about the, 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 the gender gap. School, university, internship, pay raise. I'll go for 25%. I'm 35. My wife is I'm pregnant. For, for the, the next, next four years, years, I'm working my way up. Part-time. In retirement, retirement, I get 26% Decent less pension. pension. The idea was so simple, so simple that I, I thought first, okay, it, it's already existing. Uh, I need to 
uh, you know, to, to do some research because it's so simple and so smart that, yeah, it has to be already done, but not. And the idea is very simple. It's a, to talk about the gender gap that just put one voice from, from a male and one voice from a female, okay? And they are talking about their, their journey. For example, their journey, uh, their professional journey. And you see that everything is the same, it's the same, it's the same. But at one point about the salary, they are not saying the same thing. And then they are, they, and so I really love the simplicity of this idea. This is, I think the, the, the hardest past part of our job is to do simple thing and, and, and very strong. And I don't know, even someone that doesn't uh, read or even doesn't understand English, get the idea by listening this radio. And, and I think it's very smart, powerful. And I would love that young creative uh, read that, listen to that and say, wow, this is great advertising. Yeah. That's, that's lovely. Uh, what you said reminded me of when I came into business, which was a very, very long time ago, the, the really smart creative people, rather than sort of slightly looking down on radio because they would prefer a TV brief. They, they used to use radio as, as a training ground, actually, for, you know, crafting dialogue and, and you know, directing actors, as you say, and, and as a preparation for television, actually, as much as anything else. So it is always great to hear good radio, isn't it? I, I, I completely agree. Thank you. Uh, Maybe. Mimo, would you like to talk about your choice here? A campaign to remove the T from LGBT was sweeping through the media, dividing opinion within the lesbian and gay community. So Gay Times charity Amplifund showed what a world without the T would look like. When you remove the T from language, words lose their unity and sentences lose their meaning. The same is true for the LGBT community. The item that, the entry that I chose was incomplete without the T, which is a campaign for, uh, by Amplifund and Gay, gay Times. Um, where it was talking about how um, a couple of years ago there was a movement to remove the T from LGBT, but yeah. really how um, it was interesting how that power of that one letter um, and language made it clear that, that the world doesn't really make sense without a T without the T in trans people. Um, so it's just interesting how there was that exact link from language, and it was so simple and and nicely done, um, and just how that unity and and it was all brought together um, with, with that campaign. And it was great because it was on outdoor. Um, it was in, um, they made an entire speech without letter T's. So that yeah. was a really interesting thing to see as well. And and that impact and how that didn't make sense at all. It was very incoherent without T and, and trans people. Um, yeah. And also just the balance of how the headlines were crafted and um, so that you, you understood it enough without T's. Um, but also it made sense as a whole too. So it's really, um, yeah, it was really powerful. That I thought. That, and, and incredibly topical too, as well, because mm -hmm. it's very much, you know, part of the discussion, isn't it, going on? Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and then Keenan, uh, talk about your your choice. I can understand why you chose it, of course, being, being a lover of the product, actually, so. This is a story of rejection. Delicious, delicious rejection. <laughs> To give you an idea of how perfectly perfect the final brew is, we've released the near perfect rejects. Now you can try them. Matilda Bay Rejected Ales. The best beers you were never meant to taste. Um, I've chosen um, a piece of work that was entered, well, was entered in multiple uh, subcategories, but uh, it really popped for me in the storytelling category, sub subcategory. It's by uh, apparently the original craft brewery. Uh, which is an Australian brewery called Matilda Bay. Yeah. They were on the quest to create the, the perfect ale and they called it the original ale. But from the beginning of that journey to the very end, they created 27 different batches of the beer to get to the perfect one. And they, they took all of those failures and created a story around each and every single one. And they called it the rejected ales. So mm -hmm. the reason why this 
piece of work stood out to me is because I, I used to work on, on alcohol brands a lot myself in the past. And especially when you need to focus on the intrinsic, the, the actual liquid, it's incredibly difficult to, to, to make a story out of that because every other beer alcohol brand talks about it's, you know, the, how wonderful the liquid actually is to consume. But this, the story was so charming and just created such a smile in the mind. You felt like you were in the brewery with them and they kind of made a character almost out of the master brewer. I think his name is Phil Sexton. Again, apparently the granddaddy of craft beer. Um, but it kind of makes him both the protagonist and the antagonist. I don't know if you agree with me, Miho, uh, but the, he was like leading them on this quest, but also the one going, no, 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 no. So he was the one creating all the rejections. Um, they like wrote this beautifully written booklet as well that, that tells each and every story, but like the cans themselves, the way they were designed, they were kind of like minimally designed, which made the copy pop that made those stories pop and it also created a hero out of the eventual out of the eventual original ale which was just such a nicely packaged thing um and yeah i, I wish i could read an excerpt to you guys because the writing is just really well done yeah that, that, I, I mean actually the language in the entry film was really clever and good as well wasn't it i mean so the entry film was and i i, I looking at the piece i i, I thought the, the, the pack, pack, packaging copy was was fantastic actually very engaging and uh, and good yeah that's that's great yeah and um was it what was that what particularly got the jury's vote was it was it the packaging itself keenan or, or was it just the whole the, the whole project overall the whole project overall but i think everyone was unanimous uh in that the, the storytelling of it was was the hero so i think yeah. we yeah it was a very strong candidate in that subcategory uh, particularly yeah. And I think the rigor that went from, you know, whether it's storytelling, packaging or naming, it was just all really, it all came together and each item really uh, brought it to life, had a personality. Yeah, it was excellent. Yeah, and it's they sent the, the 27 iterations out to journalists, I think, didn't they? And, and uh, 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 yeah, it, so it was yeah. a fantastic PR campaign as well. And, and it was actually a thing that you could buy as a consumer because yeah. they, they really right. said, yeah. Yeah bottle stores but also just the names of each can like yeah. it was called yeah nah or the ballpark yeah. you know, like it was just really really funny and i just yeah. love the fact that um uh, like both the bravery of a client and the agency to take failure and make that the centerpiece of the communication it's just yeah. great that was excellent um i'm, I'm gonna get it we might go in reverse order here so come back to you Kenyon and in in your juries, were, were, this is a very difficult question to uh, um, to answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Were, were there any kind of themes that you saw emerging? I mean, you know, our business does change quite slowly from year to year. Was anything new that was sort of you know exemplified in projects that that the jury liked? Anything coming out of COVID or isolation or the fact we live in a post truth world and stuff like that? Any 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 anything that that caught your eye or, or your I, I don't know if there was any specific theme when it came to the the what the what the the panelists selected, um, but what I what I would say is that like what I what I also learned from this experience is that a lot of the the jurors um, consider the design the overall design as integral to the writing as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not necessarily divorced from each other. Which I, I, you know, it's, I've never really like viewed it that way before, but I think that is how that was like the lens that everybody was looking was looking through is like how is the what's the overall entry in terms of the graphic design, the, the writing, how it all comes together as one piece. Yeah. Um, what I what I would say is that I think what I was what I was missing in terms of the entry, and I don't know if this is answering your question, but in terms of themes, there was just, there wasn't anything that made me laugh out loud. And it's interesting um, because the writing for advertising guys, you both chose something that was really, really funny. Um, and I, I was also part of that jury last year. And there was a lot of, lot of funny, a lot of like very, very well-written pieces of comedy. 
And that is what was missing from the design, the writing for design category. And I, I would like to see more of that come through. A very interesting uh, blogger called Ben Kay, who write, wrote an article, a blog on precisely that subject, actually, a couple of days ago, which is what, why, where's all the humor gone? In, he was writing about advertising primarily, but and perhaps we don't live in very funny times. That, that, but, you know, you do need some light relief. Well, we, we, we live in confusing times, like like Guyton said, and we make fun of that. So this, yeah. uh, you can find the humor in anything. It's just, I think, you know, the, yeah. but it has for some reason, design writers don't really employ the currency of humor as, as much as the advertising writers do. Oh, but it has disappeared like, um, a little bit from advertising. Sorry, Miho, you get, I'm interrupting. Miho. I'm just going to say, in terms of writing for design, I felt like there were a lot of pieces around maybe social justice. So a bit like the um, incomplete without the T um, or about um, helping disadvantaged kids, you know, yes. there programs like that or cultural things um, yeah. and less possibly um, humorous things. I, I felt there were a number of puns. I don't know about you, Keenan, but <laughs> yeah. some good, some, some like some stronger than others. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, definitely interesting. I thought writers were advised to write down all the puns that they could think of and then throw them all in the bin. <laughs> Burn them. <laughs> yeah. well, good though. That's what I was always told. Uh, Gaetan, any, any themes and you know, yeah. trends that you, you saw emerging? Yeah, for sure. For sure uh, I feel um, a, a deep uh, trend uh, between, let's say, I think all the jurors that. Uh, we need more lightness, more humor, more, uh, more creativity, more optimism. Uh, I will take one example, I think, in our jury, uh, Nancy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's the rocking mamas. What makes a rock star? What are they made of? Zoom calls, broom falls, footballs and shh. Here's to the one true rock star of the year, your mama. If we were like 10 years ago, uh, copywriters did an amazing film. That was a note for all the mum. Uh, that was a film from Inaritu. That was PNG, uh, thanks mum. And that was super emotional and that was amazing, yeah. okay? But now, like 10 years after, after we are in uncertain time, you know, there's the COVID, now there's the war, uh, you know, and when there is economic crisis, you you feel that brands are really empathizing with with people, and they are more emotional. We have we have seen less, let's say, tears dry, um, heavy emotional piece, and that's I think is a kind of global trend. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, rocking mamas is is a great way. It's another way to tribute all the mum in the world. But it's done not in a tears way or too heavy. It's done with energy, with, uh, with I don't know. It's, it's different. And I think, yeah, and, and I think all the jurors and all the creative directors I'm talking to are asking for that. Like, okay, give me the creativity, give me the smile, give me, give me this creative magic. And yeah, I think people are asking for that and yeah. and yeah and and even some very i don't know there are some very important topic uh now about environment uh, and, uh about the health and lots of the, but now we we are seeing projects that are not as heavy and emotional and blah 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 that, um that do even better the job i think the, uh, it, in in some ways in the past you know five words and an image and a logo, that is a very pure test of, you know, of writing apart from anything else, but of advertising generally. Well, Nancy, what about you? Any 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 trends that you'd like to uh, talk yeah. about? Yeah, I think Gaetan uh, really touched on the one, one that I was gonna talk about, humor. Um, you know, we saw a lot of wonderful humor and it's funny that we wanted to award that work. I think, you know, I think it's very telling of the time we're in. We've come out of a very heavy period. We're still in a very heavy period with everything that's going on in the world. And I think people need a bit of lightness. So there was a lot of wonderful humor and we awarded some of it, a lot of it, I think. Um, I also think that our jury, 
Uh, and it's not something we really talked about, but we really gravitated towards work done by brands versus pro bono work. So we really awarded the hard stuff. You know, it's really hard to do. Oatly, you know, yeah. um, Rocker Mamas from the Rolling Stones magazine. You know, like we really did end up awarding um, branded work. Um, and we did tend to stay away from the really heavy pro bono, you know, tug on the hard strings work. I think it was just a natural thing. We didn't talk about it, but um, I think we recognize the uh, level of difficulty that went into doing that kind of work for those brands. Um, so I, I thought that was another trend in our room um, in really being responsible in awarding the, you know, great, hardworking work in the world that was also brilliantly, brilliantly crafted. Is there anything that anyone has left unsaid that, or any, any sort of summing up, any, any, any sort of uh, thoughts to end with? Keenan, anything, anything you'd like to add? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll come to you first, Maggie. Just, uh, yeah. I, um, I mean, the conversation, I think, has moved past that, but just on the, yeah. the visceralness of an entry, um, there was an entry called The Lost Class by Change the Riff. Bit, which yeah. was a very visceral vis visceral piece about visceral yeah. thing about seeing those empty seats right amazing i yeah. wonder if sitting in an audience with your fellow jurors watching that together if that would have been more impactful or have, would have had a different impact and therefore would have been awarded differently um as opposed to like you know saturday night sitting in front of your laptop watching that amongst I know another different I, so I think that's a really good point. I think you know a shared experience is is often a very different experience from you know one yeah. you have on your own. I think that's a that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Nancy, any any thoughts to leave with? Are you I mean I would just say maybe my final like message would be to clients is that when we judge the work, client bravery matters to us. Like some of the work we awarded, we thought it was like, wow, that's really brave for a client to do, for example, in even more confusing times. We awarded the radio spot a little more highly because the end of it, not only did it have nothing other to, to rely on other than the words and it was craft writing, but at the end, they even questioned their own product. They're like, oh, you know, chicken, you know, plant-based chicken. Oh, I don't know. Like, and it was like, that's really brave. This is about plant-based yeah. chicken. You're selling plant-based chicken and you're questioning plant-based chicken. And that really comes into play as we're judging it. Yeah. Um, was bravery exhibited? So be brave. Yeah, terrific. Guys, Han, any 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 thoughts to close with? Yeah, for sure. Bring uh, bring back the slices uh, of GNID. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you like those? You got a whole I love those slices. You get pencil now. It's much better. Yeah. <laughs> I really love it. Like, uh, I remember uh, even slices or mansion, uh, you know, or, or in book uh, a, a few years ago. That was amazing. Like, and I don't know, I remember those slices that were, uh, I don't know, at the agency, people were like dying to have a slices, uh, even more than a, than a, than a, a pencil, sorry. So I don't know. I drop you that, but that was really, even in terms of design, that was really nice. And I remember all those slices where all the people were putting the, the glass of beer on it. Uh, I don't know, I give it to you. <laughs> but I thought it was something very iconic uh, uh, of the GNID and yeah. We'll have a think about it. Thank you. <laughs> Amiho, any last thoughts? Um, I guess it's it's not as maybe profound as the slices, but <laughs> I think this year um, in our category, I thought it was quite refreshing and and nice to see that we there are quite a few strong names in there, so that was quite good because I know that naming is a challenge that um, we face oh, yeah. every day, <laughs> uh, every year. So it was great to see that. So. That's great. Well, everywhere you hear. The question asked, where are all the copywriters? And but it's good to, to know that there are at least some alive and well and, <laughs> and writing good stuff. And and um so I just thank you uh all of you for sharing your 
first of all, for judging, as I said at the beginning, but, but then for sharing your, your kind of insights, your wit and wisdom uh, with our audience. They're, they're, they're going to find this very stimulating. Uh, so thank you all very much. Thank <laughs> you.